break through the cage that seals you. Incarnation of Thunder, ride the Vanguard! Draconic Kaiser Vermilion! Welcome back everyone, my name is Steven Rodriguez, I'm your true champion, and no, the thumbnail and title are not wrong, we are playing a Narukami deck that has Indra in it today. <sighs> this should be exciting. <laughs> But before I get started, thank you guys so much for all the support on the Common Cup, as well as all the recent support here on the channel. It really does mean the world to me. My new upload schedule is going strong, and I really do appreciate all you guys' feedback. Thank you guys so very much. If you guys are excited for this video, as well as all the other videos that I've been putting out recently, please be sure to let me know that by leaving a like on this video, subscribing to the channel, and clicking that bell for notifications, so that you guys know when my videos go live for you. I think something like 50-ish percent of you guys aren't actually subscribed that watch these videos. So just know that I do post videos five times a week. I do all kinds of Digimon, Vanguard, TCG, blog, anime videos. And if that kind of stuff interests you, just know that subscribing is always an option. Also, quick little announcement for you guys. Be sure to get excited because this Friday I'll be releasing another episode of Card Fight Vanguard Trivia, my special series where I go through sort of the uh, little facts and figures about the archetypes of the Card Fight Vanguard TCG. So definitely get excited for that. It's going to be on Friday. But with all that being said, you guys, let's go ahead and get started with the second video of the week, my deck list for Vajra Emperor Indra. <laughs> <laughs> this should be fun. So here we are guys at the deck loading screen and before I get into it I want to really stress that I am in no way saying that this version of Narukami is like the updated way to play This is just like another option that you can play with if you want to have like a more hybrid Deck that actually has a mixture of archetypes in it instead of just like good stuff Narukami like it used to be um, I think the good stuff build if you update it with certain cards and like you play it a little bit differently given the new format might be more consistent than this deck but the idea behind this deck is really strong and I think it actually uses the tools in Narukami in a way that's really interesting and that's why I want to show it off to you guys today. Here it is. As you can see, I'm only missing two Indras, uh, which is actually kind of crazy to me. I didn't realize I already had two copies of it in my deck, but uh, here you are. If you guys don't know what Indra does, uh, Vajra, Emperor Indra, he has two main skills. So the first one is, when this unit attacks a Vanguard, Cataplast 1 to get plus one critical for each other Vajra, Emperor, Indra until the end of that battle. So uh, this means that if you have a copy of him on the rear guard, uh, you have two crit. If you have two copies of him on the rear guard, you get three crit. Uh, and there are cards in here that actually become uh, Vajra Emperor Indra when they're on rear guard so you actually have multiple copies of him not just the ones that are Indras themselves and his other skill is during your turn this unit gets power plus 1k for each of your nobles right now there's only two noble cards uh, that exist that I know of uh, this guy uh, Vayu and then Indra himself so basically if you have two Indras on your board uh, and you have an AK booster behind Indra, you can actually swing for 21k 3 critical uh, without any limit break shenanigans and stuff. So the idea behind this deck is to sort of use Indra as your non-limit break sort of strategy and you use him to sort of pressure your opponent, get them to five as fast as possible or just, you know, uh, pressure out PGs. And then in the late game, you go into Vermilion here and you just kill them. If they're at five damage and you go into Vermilion, that's basically saying, hey, do you have three PGs? If the answer is no, you die. Um, so that's kind of the idea behind why he's in the deck and why Dungaree is kind of not in the deck. Um, also, it's kind of like the main sort of synergy that these two cards have. He's the card that comes in before Limit Break, gets him to 5 damage, and then when they're at 5 damage and you're at Limit Break, you go into Vermilion and you kill him. Super solid, um, really cool skill. If you guys don't know what this guy does, Counter Blast 2, attack the whole front row, gain 3k when he attacks. Boom, done. And then there's the Grade 3 Noble. This card, besides being a Noble, sucks. Don't... <laughs> Don't keep him in your hand, shuffle him back. If you draw him, that's great. He's an extra card you can commit to give your uh, Indra some power. The real reason why you wanna play more nobles and not play any gins or anything is because there are moments where like your opponent's like say at two damage, right? And you have an Indra or a grade two Wyvern Knight on board and you wanna kind of push them to like five or even force out a PG. Well, in order to do that, you need, you need to attack with a rear guard first. And if Indra isn't really hitting good numbers, they could get a defensive and then they could like stop your attack. So having more noble cards in your deck to kind of increase your Vanguard's power with a red 
river or something will be actually really good for you because then you can uh, play around defensives really well. So that's why he's in here. Um, no other reason. <laughs> uh, he does have a really cool effect, I will say, on Vanguard. When this unit attacks, count must want to get plus 10k for each of your other values on the board. That's kind of cool, but there are heal triggers, so you don't want to draw them and playing them. I mean, I, I guess, right? It's better than not playing them. So yeah, that's the great three lineup. That's kind of the whole shtick of the deck, how you're going to kind of work with it, how it kind of makes sense, and kind of what you're going to do. And hopefully we can pull off some crazy plays today and just kind of like win the game with crits. That seems kind of cool. Also, really quickly, the reason why we're playing nine draw is because outside of Rising Phoenix, we have no way to plus. And this deck is kind of beat sticky and kind of combo-y. So if you want to be able to kind of achieve your skills and stuff and even have a chance to survive in like a late game scenario, you need a way to plus. And so we have Rising Phoenix as well as the nine draw triggers to kind of accomplish that. Moving on to our grade twos, I sort of went with like the best cards from... Narukami, including the one card that's really good with, with uh, Indra. So we have our four Garuda, counter charge, we need it really strong. We have our four Sheedan. So, so in the past, I have not been a big fan of running multiple copies of the intercept blockers. However, in this deck, because you want to kind of just like bum rush them with crits, it's actually really, really strong to have high copies of uh, Sheedan and Raiden because you can basically attack their vanguard faster and because you have automatic crits you can force out pgs faster so, so these cards actually have a lot of synergy with indra because you're not really focused on killing rear guards you're focused on killing your opponent so that's actually really good next we have two death scythe because this deck counter blasts a, a lot question mark it, it, it counter blasts at very certain points and having like an early game counter blast card like death scythe is really cool and plus we are playing garuda so like we have a lot of counter charge so we can really control our resources very well so having death scythe as a way to sort of control back row or like uh get pluses against our opponent or even get rid of pesky intercepts so injury can smash face is really good and then finally we have three thousand name wyvern knight uh whose effect is rear guard if you have a nobles vanguard soul blast one to have this unit also have the same card name as your vanguard until end of turn a big thing to keep in mind here boys and girls is that if you use a rising phoenix and you do not use scission you will not have enough soul in order to actually achieve this guy's effect so be sure to be wary of how many cards are in your soul phoenix is really only in here to be used once not really in here to be used twice because we do need to conserve our soul for cards like wyvern knight as you can see by the way his role is to be like oh that's another indra so i gain a crit and it's a grade two so you can commit this to the front row have it be an injure give yourself a crit and then still have an intercept for the turn uh which is really strong another grade two by the way that you can play like i mentioned is the grade two stormbringer dragon he's a he's the top five search at a grade three on hit i think uh really good grabs extra indras really solid i'm not really too focused on having like a board of indras i'm more focused on getting like one crit every now and then uh in the early game to kind of push little bits of damage and then use vermilion in the late game to kind of push for game that's kind of my whole deck strategy everything else is built around kind of just like synergy and good cards essentially plus stormbringer is like a weird card he's like he's kind of last one and like I would have to take out my death size for him and I feel like death size gives us more value game to game to game versus a card like Stormbringer Dragon. Uh, finally, we have our four PGs, our four Red Rivers. Red River is actually really good in this deck because, like I said, it is possible to make Indra here 13k. Uh, so you can make him 21k uh, thanks to Red River. Uh, like I said, we have our Raiden for like, extra ways to be aggressive against our opponent. Plus, it has really good synergy with Indra. And then finally, we have our two Phoenix for, again, that just that one little plus fixes our board, digs for another copy of Indra, does all the fun things that we needed to do. And of course, we have the best starter in Narukami. We have Lizard Soldier Saishin. Um, you could play Spark Kid Dragoon, and honestly, I'm in one of the games I play today, I might try Spark Kid Dragoon, because while I may not like Stormbringer, I do kind of like Spark Kid Dragoon, uh, because this deck isn't really focused around retiring things. It isn't really focused about like getting ahead of your opponent. It's just about killing them and just trying to be like super aggressive. So you don't really need a card like this in your deck, but he's such a powerful card and disrupts so many combos um, that I kind of like having him in the deck. But I think you could take this out, especially since people are playing Libergals and like things that can be used earlier. So like Saishin is like losing a little bit of value right now, but a starter is still very valuable against decks like Spike Brothers, Kagero, and even the occasional Pale Moon player. So um, I wouldn't mind keeping this. I think this is correct, but you could play Spark Kid Dragoon. And so yeah guys, that's the deck. I'm really excited to take it on Ranked and see what it can do. If you guys have any questions, leave them down in the comments below, or better yet, hop into my Twitch channel. I go live every Monday, Thursday, Friday. I do all kinds of things and just chatting, and I play a lot of Vanguard Zero. So come ask some questions and hopefully get some answers. Let's go ahead and take this deck on the ladder and justify all those Indras that you've been pulling from set six. 
All right, guys, here we are for game one, fighting against, ooh, Shadow Paladin. Okay, waiting for Great Dayusha, <laughs> waiting for Great Dayusha, aren't we all? Aren't we all just waiting for Great Dayusha? <laughs> By the way, guys, I don't know if I mentioned this on the video before, but I'm in love with the new Miwa skin. Shout out to, uh, to Spa Boy Miwa. All right, so our hand is pretty solid. I'm gonna probably keep, I really don't wanna keep too many grade ones. Yeah, I'll put that back. All right, Vermilion, no Indra. Um, there is a rare thing that happens where like you get like no Indras and stuff and like it gets kind of awkward, but I haven't really had that problem yet, which is maybe another reason to play Spark Kid maybe. But we'll find out. So we're playing against a normal Shadow, no Spec Duke Shadow, interesting to see. Uh, he does not get the right chain, feels bad, but he could always have Blast of Dark in his hand, so you never know. Oh, and there's the Indra boys, never punished. Uh, in this scenario, I'm not sure if I'm going to need Saishin to boost my Vanguard anytime soon. So I, I feel okay with putting him here. Because, like, he's not going to call anything that I need to pop anytime soon. So we'll just put him there for some value. Plus, give myself the space for either a Rising Phoenix or another Red River behind the Vanguard. Which will be more value over time. But we do have the Indra plus the Wyvern Knight. Keep that in mind. We also have the Wyvern Knight in our hands. So we will have a guaranteed crit on our first Grade 3 ride. As long as we have a uh, counter blast, which pretty sure we will. we will. Also, as of right now, my opponent has no clue what's about to happen. That's a big thing too, by the way, guys. We do have the surprise factor of Indra. I'm not sure how important it is, but say my opponent wanted to like say counter Indra, they could like play more great twos and then force me to play more cards from my hand and have more things that I need in order to actually kill them. But I don't, I don't think they're gonna do that yet. <laughs> That's the fun part. Uh, a Nemain for a Nemain, interesting. That means they're, that, that means they're a very conscious uh, shadow player because if you use too many sh uh, too many domains, you just deck out sometimes. Uh, very 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 self conscious over there. He's gonna hang onto that in the back row for some reason. Um, I guess because like he realized that I could just swing Saishin into it and like not care. I guess is the idea there. But you know, I'm probably just gonna ride Death Scythe here and then attack and pass. Cause like the cool thing about having a crit deck is I don't need to be as aggressive in the early game like I normally would be with Narukami, which is kind of cool. Oh, another one. I don't want to ride. Oh my god, I could. Oh my god, I could give. <laughs> I'll have two souls, so I can give myself three critical on my first attack. Oh my god, that's ridiculous. Okay. All right, now now we're entering into ridiculousness uh, here, uh, Indra. Oh, I, I actually kind of playing, playing four copies of the Wyvern Knight, but I wasn't sure, like, how good he would be yet. But so far, the, the play that I'm envisioning for next turn is going to be really good. So maybe. Maybe, uh, maybe, maybe four of is the right way to go. But what, what would you cut? The Garuda. You would, you would cut a Garuda for a fourth Wyvern Knight. Yeah, for sure. Because Sheedan is really important for the, for the mid and late game. He's very, he's a very important card to have four of. Because you don't normally have like massive hands like this, because you'll be calling cards a lot. So there's the Boyo. Call, call two intercepts. I dare you. I'm ready. <laughs> I'm ready if you do. I got these two Wyvern Knights lined up. <laughs> I don't think he's ready to beat out the four damage in one attack. I don't think he's ready. Oh, if I if I get a booster, I'll be super greedy about it. If I get a booster, if if if, if I get a booster for Indra, I will attack with my rear guard first. I will because I want to force him to five damage if I can. Actually, no, no, I shouldn't because then he'll PG it and then he'll be at two still. No, 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 no. So I'm gonna commit. Hmm. Yeah. No. Okay. So here's what we're gonna do. Is it on place? By the way. No, it's the act. That's so cool, actually. So I think. Depending on what I draw here. Okay, so yeah, we're just gonna ride Indra. This is gonna be so cool. I'm gonna ride Indra. Yeah, no, I think just calling double Wyvern Knight is like the way to go. We're gonna activate both their skills. And then we activate his skill again. So I think like like if I click on them, it'll say like his new name. If you own if you own card name, yeah, okay, cool. Yeah, cool. Yeah, okay, cool. It worked. Uh, and then I don't call anything else. I click the battle phase. Oh, I just realized something. We're only 10k base. I forgot. We need to get a trigger to hit. Oh, I forgot. I thought we would be automatically 11. Oh, please. Please get the trigger. I've never, I've never wanted to trigger more badly in my life. Um, so, okay, we got it. It's a heal trigger. Huge. That's a four damage swing. <laughs> Imagine if we didn't get it. I would have been so sad. I would have been the status boy in the land if we didn't get that. All right, note to self, Steven. Put Saishin behind the vanguard at all times. I forgot about this. This is this is a thing that can happen when you don't have any nobles in your hand. <laughs> but I think I'm the four damage with one attack, okay, team? Uh, that's a victory, all right? 
<laughs> I outcritted a PBO. Come on. That's pretty cool to me. Uh, and now a cool thing is like if he tries to like clap us back and like give us four damage, I can just go into Vermilion and then just go blah and, and just kill everything. So that's pretty fun. Because like four damage, three hill triggers gone. That's a pretty killable guy on Vermilion. Not going to lie. Pretty killable. <laughs> so, so far he's putting in his work. Indra is anyway. Mm-hmm. I wonder how aggressive he's gonna be. Because like I don't think he wants to give me limit break because he knows what I can do. But here's the thing though, I can just have a I, I, I just have a critical attacker essentially. If I have an, if I have a if I have a ninja in my hand, of course. Is the bit that that's the bit that's important. So yeah, he's definitely gonna activate his skill now and then we'll and then and then he'll uh cost us our PG, but it's okay. Ooh, so there's a noble. Which is good, means we can hit 11k. Which is nice. If I top deck an Indra, boys and girls, whew, we're in business. We're in business if I top deck an Indra. Or a Wyvern Knight. Well, actually, no, I don't have any soul. Never mind. We, it needs to be an Indra. Oh, he didn't actually get anything. Okay, cool. So he has no Persona Blast. We know that now. Because he would have used it, obviously. There's a Red River. All right, so now we're just going to be kind of like playing a good game of Vanguard, I guess. Uh, we're just going to call you here. I'm gonna call you here. I'm not gonna call the Red River because if I do that, he can just kill it, which I don't want him to do. So we're just gonna go like this. Um, I'm actually going to attack Vanguard into Rear Guard so I can use Scytion and kill the Blaster Javelin uh, because it's always good to control Shadow Paladin's board because then they're gonna need to be committing more cards from hand in order to actually get any pressure against us. So it's always nice. I guess I could have called the Vermilion then, but I don't think it matters actually because he has no Rear Guard skills anyway, so it doesn't really matter. If I hang on to him for late game. And there's the fourth heal trigger. Sheesh, every single heal trigger of his went, went into the damage zone. Uh, that's a little frustrating, but I guess it's okay considering I three crit him, so it's fine. <laughs> I did guarantee three damage him, which is pretty hot. But now I have three way threes in my hand, but I also have two PGs in my hand too. So like, uh, so like next turn, I'm mounting a gigantic offense if he gives me limit break, right? So he needs to like have a lot and he's seen all of his heal triggers. So he's just dead if I push him to six, which is cool. I'm assuming he has two PGs in hand. That's my assumption. Two? Two sounds right. Also, it's all times. I just realized that. Wait. Is this wrong? During your turn, this unit gets power plus 1k. He's 11k right now. Whoa, is that a, is that a mistake? Uh, comments, is that a mistake? Let me know. I think it is continuous, but I'm not, I'm not sure if it should be or not. I'm cool with it. I'm cool, I'm cool with either, if I'm honest. But, um... Yeah, that's really weird. Also, can this guy stop triggering? How many triggers does this guy check this entire game? That's kind of ridiculous at this point. I'm playing Indra here, bro. You already had an advantage, okay? Give me a break. <laughs> you've seen all four heals, and you've gotten, like, all like all these draw triggers besides your Vanguard. You've checked them. So, like, I'm annoyed. You're annoyed. It's fine. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Uh, Here's another pretty, like... Ooh, here's a thing that I kind of want to do. Yeah, I'm gonna do it this way because this way like plays around him having a defensive a bit more You know, I'm just gonna swing at the face plates now because I don't really need so in hindsight I did not need to ride into vermilion, but there's no point not as you know I did for the 21k attack. Yeah, 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 never mind. I'm smart. I'm smart. I'm smart I'm smart If he has a booster in his hand and, and, and a second PG we lose un 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 unless I heal unless I heal Oh, no PG, let's go! Guaranteed victory! Let's go, Indra! He got us there! <laughs> so had my opponent had a second PG and a booster, he could have um, retired, or an, or an 11k attacker, actually. He could have retired one of his cards to kill my Sheedan and then attack me three times, and I only had two PGs. That's what he needed a six damage shield, but he didn't have it, so we're good. Indra, you got us there, boy. Thank you for all that early damage, creating all that pressure out of nowhere. Moving on to game two. All right, guys, here we are for game two. Fighting up against Pale Moon. Okay, so far we are 1-0 and o using Indra. Very excited to see if we can make that 2-0. and o. I've had a recent streak recently on my videos of, like, always winning the first game, like, wholeheartedly, but then always losing the second game. So let's see if we can't break that streak today. This hand is honestly pretty perfect, uh, so I'm going to keep it. Now, a thing that I'm wondering at this point is, are they playing Jimmy Fortress? Because if they are, we could be in some trouble because Jimmy Fortress is a really good hard counter Narukami because obviously, 
but 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 having a card like Sheedon though, like so like it's really good against Vermilion, but it's really bad against cards like Sheedon because if I use Sheedon on it, I can just ignore it and never attack it. Thus, I'm good. I don't need to like worry myself uh, with it. And because they're playing Girl Who Crossed the Gap, I will put this uh, this Saishin here so I can use it as soon as possible because I want that thing dead. That's a really good card for them in like their consistency wise. Plus it's the only zero they have. So the second I get rid of it, they can't get a full board of four cards with their Lukie. So it's really good to kill that ASAP. I wonder if they're gonna be heads up and not give me the damage. I'm excited to see what they do. Because personally, I have not fought against Narukami playing my Pale Moon deck, but I believe it'd be a very tough matchup because there's awkward things like this that happen. So let's see what they do. I would not be surprised if they pass. They're attacking me. Misplay, I think, but it's fine. Oh, that's the, uh, that's the, uh, what, what's his face? That's the, uh, damage ad, yeah? I want to say that's the damage ad. No, when this unit, when this, when the attack, this, you, this unit boosted hits, uh, Vanguard, Soul Charge 1. Huh. Interesting. I wonder how much value that actually gets them in their games. I'm just gonna hang on to everything, pop their uh, their dude, and move on with my life. Pretty easy turn. <laughs> uh, that's a really cool thing too. I, I mentioned this in the first game, but I'll mention it again here. Like, it's nice to play a Narukami deck that I know I don't need to be aggressive with because the second I ride into Indra, I can just get aggression out of nowhere through critical through critical effects, or I can get aggression through my grade twos that can stop intercepts. So basically, running Indra gives you like more of an early game game plan, other than just like calling your whole hand and attacking like you used to have with Vermilion and Dungaree. But now we can have actual just like hardcore strats during the early game, and then the late game just bring out Vermilion to win the game, uh, which is kind of cool. Okay, I know I know what this guy, th this card's really neat. I see people playing it. People mentioned this to me in my Pale Moon deck profile. I like this card. It's too wombly for me. I'm a consistency boy. You guys know this, and that's why I liked having my uh, Skull Jugglers instead. But if you, if you want to play this instead, you totally can. Also, they're playing the Counter Blast 2 draw cards. So they're playing a very techy uh, Pale Moon deck. Props to them. Uh, I do not think that's the best way to play Pale Moon right now, but props to them. Props to them nonetheless. <laughs> I'm trying to like throw shade but also give compliments because I'm like wait 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 fair is fair All right, so I have no Indra copies no nothing, but it's cool I have Everything I need essentially to get some good damage here The question becomes do I just want to like attack them in the faceplate or do I want to like do other things? I'm kind of cool just like attacking them in the faceplate if I'm honest I wonder how much I, I can't do I could call like a whole board here. I just like harass them I don't want to give them limit break, right? You yeah, know, I, I don't want to be too aggressive. I'd rather just like have a board here and then just like go about my day. I would have loved Indra here though. Having like an Indra copy or a Wyvern Knight would have been super nice right now. So yeah, maybe Spark Kid Dragoon would be good, but but I, I think the value long term I'm gonna get from that Saishin play is gonna be way more important uh, for me living and winning this game. So I think I think like me just wanting Spark Kid Dragoon isn't enough to say that he's better than Saishin. And they are playing Dreamy Fortress. Okay, so we are playing against like the teched out Wombo Combo Pale Moon deck. So I'm very excited to see like, cause like they're playing Turquoise. No, no, sorry, that's their sleeves. I was like. They're playing turquoise. No, no, no. Sleeves. Sleeves. Sleeves are different than cards, Steven. Sleeves are different than cards. <laughs> um, hashtag Steven doesn't know what sleeves are. <laughs> um, I'm excited here. I'm going to hang on to this Raiden. Sorry, Ryan, until the end of time. I will never call this card until I see a Dreamy Fortress either in the soul or on this board. And there's a Farah. Okay, so this kind of makes sense to me as they're playing like all these crazy cards because they can far which soul charges a lot like i mean a lot and can really filter your soul really well there's the night sky so they can shove their dreamy fortress in the soul so now i have my ryan here so i'm going to use my ryan next turn to paralyze or just stop the dreamy from working so i don't need to attack it thus their skill won't activate and there's a midnight bunny wow they're playing they're, are they just playing like a bunch of one-ups man <laughs> it feels like they are so this thing doesn't even have his effect, right? Yeah, no, you need to have another copy of them in the soul. They don't have any. Interesting. I'm surprised they did it this way. Oh, wait, can this put this card in the soul, right? I know. Very confused, but it's okay. Also, why they, they're they playing very odd team. I'm, I'm a little confused and I'm sure you are as well, but it's okay. Um, well, here's the thing, chat. Um, I don't want to commit anything from my, from my hand to the board, so we're just going to swing into that Dreamy Fortress, get it out of my sight hole, and move on with my life. There's a draw trigger, very big for next turn. 
Red River, fine, better than zero. So that was a very weird play by my opponent, and it led to me not drawing into an attacker, but it did give me a, 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 another PG, so I'm okay with it. Um, very confused, but it's okay. Let's see what let, let's see what they do. Far, good card, not good right now for them because they obviously don't have any more copies in their hands, so they can't persona last. But let's see what happens. There's a Cerberus. I am a 10k Vanguard without any other nobles in play. Also, a cool thing that I didn't mention that you can do, by the way, is just like play in Dresden stuff in the back row and just like always have like 11k or 12k power. Which is just like dope. Didn't mention that, but I probably should have. Because it, it is a cool thing that you can do. And there's the Midnight Bunny, so they will get to like, do some shenanigans. There really isn't like that many shenanigan cards in their soul besides the Trapezes and the Midnight Invader. This is useless, right? Yeah. On rear guard, anyway. Plus, they're going to attack me a bunch. Any defensives my way were going to be super good. And if I top deck into a Vermilion, with them just attacking me this much, uh, they're going to be in big trouble because they only have one card in their hand. And once I just get rid of that board... Uh, they in trouble. Also, there's a Wyvern Knight, so now we can make the crit start flying. So even if I don't get Vermilion, I can still create a lot of pressure regardless of them having two intercepts. Big deal. I wonder what they're doing this for. Just to like make me maybe protect their units, maybe? I'm not sure. Because there's no world where they're hitting me again for another damage <laughs> unless they get double unless they somehow got triple trigger, which is very impossible. That is God, are they playing like a singleton deck, honestly, at this point? I'm very confused. They are definitely playing like 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 some kind of weird like lots of one ofs deck, which I'm kind of about it. I'm not gonna lie to you, it's kind of cool, but I'm very confused, and I'm sure you are as well. I said that a lot already, but <laughs> I'm just so confused. Yep, no triggers, no more damage. It is now my turn. That's the biggest thing about this like Wombowy deck is like you're not really Vanguard focused, you're not really power focused. It just seems like a lot of weird random things, and if I just get any like once you deal me two damage, you can't deal me any more for a turn, right? So like. Without without like a way to boost your vanguard or get like little bits of like consistency every now and then like I don't really know what you're doing <laughs> If I'm honest, but it's okay. I don't, I don't I don't blame you. I Would love to draw a 10k something. Oh my god. It's a, it's a, it's a 10k something <laughs> It's like Qualia, you're back. Pleasure to have you. Uh, we're gonna go like this. We're gonna go like this I will attend I will call this question is like do we be greedy do we be greedy i'm a greedy boy not having another noble in play is a little scary but it's okay so we actually my effect i am now a vajra <laughs> indra i would love to see if they have the pg first is that the is that the better play no the better play is the kind of oh five cards it's actually not that much you know what i'm gonna go i'm gonna i'm gonna see if they have the pg first it's just, it's just it's just smarter to me I know this might be dumb and a waste of the Ryan as well, but they don't have any hopes of getting any Jimmy Fortress in there, so I'm kind of cool with this. Okay, go. No triggers. Do we see a defensive? Am, am I a smart boy? Oh, I'm a dumb boy. They, they didn't even have the PG. I could have won that turn. Oh, I'm so frustrated there, boys and girls. I am more mad at myself than I'm sure you are. You are screaming at me in the comments. I know, but we are very far ahead, and I, I, I think we're fine regardless, but let's see. If I see a Persona Blast here, that means they would have 6 damage shield. So, you know, I'm just saying. Hindsight 2020. It was a stand trigger. Sara's there, not Farah. <laughs> I was one letter off. <gasps> Persona Blast! I'm right! I was right! They 6 damage shield. So, like, it didn't matter. But, you know, woo! <laughs> I was right. They, uh, they, they couldn't do the thing. So, I guess... That's a victory for me. I don't know if it is or not, <laughs> but they're out of heals and they're at five damage. So Intra's putting in work, which is kind of weird because it feels like this game has been really awkward this entire time for me, but whatever. Indra came out of nowhere and was like, hey, guess what? I have a crit, so now you die. <laughs> I guess. I would love to just draw into a Vermilion right now and just be like, okay, Vermilion Thunderbolt, blah, gone. <laughs> That'd be a very uh, cinematic way to win, I think. Cinematic way to win. Yeah, that's the way to say it. Ooh, poetry of language, boys and girls. Poetry of language. F nothing's even hidden for numbers. I'm very confused by, like, the way they de they've decided to do things. It does gain 3k power when it comes out, doesn't it? Cool. You could have called all kinds of things then. You could have waited to call this and then just called this in front of this and made it a 22k column. <laughs> but, you know, to each their own. 
But I guess they could just do this and now they have two more attacks. And they do play stand triggers. Um, but they would need to get a double trigger in order for their Sarah here to hit me. Because they're not going to be able to call another card that can actually do it. So we're, we're still okay. But we could have easily not been okay. I will say that. At this stage. If they get a draw trigger into a stand trigger, I'm going to be so sad. <laughs> So sad. You guys have no clue how sad I will be if this happens. Okay, double draw. Still not happy about that, but it's better than a stand and a draw, because a stand and a draw means we lose. I wonder if they'll... I mean, they're obviously going to attack my Vanguard, right? They have to. Alright, again. I would love just to see a Vermilion top deck. Psyqualia, Zhu. Call the draw. Death Scythe. I'll take that. Basically the same thing, essentially. We call you, I call you, I go snip, snip, snipe, snipe, and they lose because there's no way they have three PGs in their hand and they're out of heal triggers, so we win the game. Boom. Easy peasy lemon sleazy. No questions asked. There's the Vermilion making his uh, his like little cameo, and there's it in my hand. He's like, hey, did, you, did someone say my name? <laughs> And there you go, boys and girls. That is game two. 2-0 two and oh with Indra today, boys and girls. Just so you know, we won that game on Indra as well, which is just kind of crazy to me. So yeah, this deck is super dope. And there you guys go. That does it for my Bajra Emperor Indra deck profile for the brand new Narukami deck in Carve Vanguard Zero. I'm not sure if it's the better way to play Narukami, but it is a different way. It's not just good stuff Narukami, play Vermilions, play Dungarees, you're done. It's kind of an interesting way, adds some depth and options to the deck, which you guys know I'm a gigantic fan of in any kind of card game, so definitely give it a try if you haven't already. Let me know how it goes for you down in the comments below or over on Twitter slash in my live streams. But that'll be it for today's video, you guys. If you did enjoy, be sure to leave a like on this video, subscribe to the channel, and click that bell for notifications so that you guys know when my videos go live for you. If you have any lingering questions that this video did not answer, leave them down in the comments below, or better yet, hop into my Twitch channel. I go live every Monday, Thursday, Friday. I do all kinds of things in just chatting, and I play a lot of Vanguard Zero. So come ask some questions and hopefully get some live answers. And with that being said, as always, I have been your true champion, Steven. Please be sure to work hard, rest easy, and live well. And I'll see you all next time. Peace.